Hey there YouTube, um, we have a little update toward the storage project, um, had a few people always uh, ask me what was the SC8000 for and uh, the reason for it and why I did not use the Dell operating system, the Dell uh, control, uh, storage control. Uh, I got in contact with Dell and purchasing a third party device that is not supported and it's, this has been decommissioned when the company that previously had it got rid of it and they let Dell know to stop the warranty but and stop the support so even if I look up the service tag on Dell and everything else it says that there's warranty till 2017 but I can't do anything about it so I have removed the Dell operating system and loaded FreeNAS and right now I have this uh, Dell Compellent SC200 filled with this is a testing simulation right now I'm still using my R510 for most of the production once I figure out how I want to do it I'm gonna set up this thing and then from there we'll take it on so I'm gonna while oh, we're down here for you guys so right now I have two SAS drives they are two terabytes each um, right now they're mirrored into uh, RAID 0 I've been playing around with it I did RAID 1 not RAID 1 RAID Z2 RAID Z1 um, did a lot of testing and then from this one all the way to this one I have the one terabyte drive so you can ignore the labels and here I am testing the SATA drives a lot of people said that this storage controller does not support SATA well I proved everyone wrong I actually got SATA to work on this drive yes it's a little bit slower but it actually does work um, I'm just testing out the whole array so I'm not really keeping these drives in here um, they are uh, Dell Enterprise uh, SATA drives, only 7200 RPMs, but for what I need this to get be, it's not too much uh, to be needed. Um, so once I have it set up, there's going to be SSD caching set up on this array. So the two 512 gigabyte Samsung Pros that I have inside here, they're actually located over here in this little bay area right here there's a, there's a hidden portion it's uh drives 12 and 13. there are two 850 pros and they're just for caching um so when i actually have the setup array for the sc200 we're going to make these last two drives in the array be ssds and freenas zfs and the rest is going to be all two terabyte drives the sas drives so there's going to be some performance and with this uh, awesome storage system I can keep it adding more nodes and FreeNAS will auto detect it so it's pretty cool all I got to do is just import the um, volumes screw myself up there server's always sharp huh? so but yeah RA10 stuff like that I had a lot of people ask me um, what's with this co-location project um, yes I am doing this with a good friend of mine we are uh, implementing a lot of different technologies and stuff to do uh, a lot of different types of hosting environments um, I won't disclose much information on that other than just what I said and uh, other than that keep in touch and you guys will see um, I'll show you guys the back portion of this. So uh, we're in the back of the storage controller. Um, if I could go down to the bottom, you guys will see the SC200. So right now I have uh, a dual 6 gigabit uh, SAS channel uh, HBA and uh, just really testing this over uh, really gigabit Ethernet even though these two yellow ports 
on the SC8000. These are actually 10 gigabit ports. These two right here. And these ones are gigabit, as you can see gigabit. And then if I can get to that, yes, you probably see the 10 gigabit. It's hard to see it. So that will be replaced. And once the whole project is completed, um, these will be in the uploading into here. And this R510 will be repurposed or I'll sell it. Um, it varies. So that's just depending on what I want to do with it. I'll probably just sell it with the drive. I'll just format it and just sell it for a decent amount. I mean, the drives are pretty much almost brand new on that thing. I'm not going to give it away. Uh, other than that, I have uh, replaced the fiber optic, the twin X with fiber optic. Since fiber optic is a true uh, endpoint type of communication where you know that everything's going to get delivered properly. Twin X copper is good, but sometimes there's uh, issues. So, other than that, there's a little update for you guys that were uh, asking about how this compellent uh, type of high density setup is. And the compellent is more of a SAN, not like a DAS unit where you just direct attach storage. Make sure you have to configure a whole array and stuff like that. Um, I did get to uh, see the software that the Dell runs on, but couldn't do much with it. Um, licenses, is, everything is licensed. I mean, it feels like the power button is licensed by the time you actually try turning it on. <laughs> but um, yes, this is almost like an R720. Um, pretty much same internals. It has two Intel Xeon E5s, uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. And so once this is done, I think it's going to be very good uh, enclosure, uh, high density setup. And I will be getting more nodes to attach to my uh, storage. And uh, from there, we'll be just scaling on. So I don't know if people wondered. I had a few people ask me in some uh, comments why there is two uh, coming in. Well, actually, I have a virtual PF sense running on my hypervisors. I have the WAN coming in and WAN coming out, so that's how it works. Uh, I did get my fiber optics enabled on the 3750s. And uh, a few fr uh, good buddies on the page asked me. So, other than that, uh, Stay tuned, like, subscribe, share more videos, um, keep in touch, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later.